Hi everyone and welcome to the Cookie Knits podcast. My name is Ira and I'm mostly a knitter and I occasionally dabble in other crafts. I'm originally from Kathmandu, Nepal and I'm coming to you from beautiful Sydney, Australia which is now home. This is my space on the internet where I show you all the things I'm making and I'm also available on Instagram and Ravelry as Cookie Knits as well. If it's your first time here, hi, hello, I hope you like what you see. If you want to keep up to date with my content, please do consider subscribing as it lets me know that you're watching. I also love reading all your likes and comments, so please do um, leave some for me. <laughs> that would be great. Um, before we get started, I just want to... Uh, I'll let you know if I'm sounding a little bit stuffy. I'm just on the tail end of a cold. However, I have lots of things to talk about and my sister's visiting from overseas for the next two weeks. So I'll be traveling around, not getting too much time to film and I thought I'd quickly update you guys uh, with my projects before it builds up to be too much and then <laughs> it becomes a bigger task to sort of show all of those things. So let's get started. My first finished object is the SEO Trot by Vera Marku in this beautiful pink color. Um, it is a little bit crumpled now because I have put it away as it's hot in Sydney at the moment. But I have knit this in the Cascade 220 fingering in the colorway Cerise and Drops Kit Silk in the colorway Pink. So it's this beautiful gorgeous color. I will post a uh, picture of me in it. The previous time that I spoke about this sweater, I mentioned that I was having to do a little bit of pin blocking <clears throat> on the bottom here as the rib was knit in a slightly smaller size and it was pulling in too much. Other than the crumpledness, I think you can see that that's managed to block out really well and it fits really well. The blocking has also really accentuated this really cool like knits and pearls texture that um, Vera has designed into this pattern and I'm super excited for the winter time so I can be the brightest and warmest person. The day that we did the pictures was quite a hot day so I was a little bit like Ugh. but I think once it cools down this is going to be a really great really comfortable and warm and it's quite light um, part of my wardrobe. I fully understand the four ply and mohair trend that's going around. It just makes a beautiful luxurious fabric. So that's my first finished object, the SEO Trot by Vera Marku, who's my friend. And then my next finished object, which I have right here, is um, something that I showed on my podcast last year and then I sort of abandoned it so it was like a UFO for a while and I don't know what got into me I pulled it out and I finished it over a couple of days and it is the phalanges this is a free pattern by Jodie Gordon Lucas and it's a pattern on from the Nitty magazine um, I think from like 2012 I think so and it's a mosaic pattern, fingerless mitten. However, the part that's real, the thing that's really cool about this glove is that it's got an interesting technique to sort of make these finger hole partitions without actually having to break the yarn and knit in small circumferences. So the way this glove is knit up is you knit all the way up till here, start doing increases for the thumb, and then you come around this way and you finish off the thumb and then you rejoin the yarn at the thumb here and then knit up into the body and then you do this sort of zigzag cast off process and you sort of pinch these two stitches together. I am absolutely not making sense. It's a bit hard to explain. <laughs> However, in the pattern, there is a free link to a video where she shows how you can use this technique in any fingerless glove or mitten. And I really like the idea of this as I wanted finger partitions because I don't want the yarn to sort of the top of the mitten to like flop around if it's an open mouthed rib or something like that. I have 
basically made this mitten for when I'm knitting outdoors or sitting outdoors in a cafe and still want use of my hands. Um, I don't really have a sit down computer desk job. So I won't be wearing these indoors. It'll be more of an outdoor glove. And as you can see, it just has enough of a partition in the fingers to sort of have a really good fit but not have to do like the pedantic knitting <laughs> so i'm super happy with this um, if i ever end up making more fingerless mittens i think i would use this finger partition technique again i don't know if the i mean i love how it looks right i think it looks cool but i don't know if i would do the mosaic it was a lot of it was a lot of tedious small circumference work, but these mittens are stunning. If I ever lost these, I think I would cry. The yarn, the purple is some leftover. It's like a Danish brand that I can't find online. All the details on my Ravelry. And then the blue, which you can barely see here, is leftovers from Three Cat Yarns in the soft sock in the colorway Duck Egg. And it just makes a really fun low contrast um, pair of mittens and I'm very happy with the fit even though you have these divisions in between the fingers I can't really feel them when I'm closing my fingers so I think this is a really nice fitting mitten set for me I'm very happy with it this is the phalanges with two E's by Jody Gordon Lucas <laughs> So that's my second finished object. And then my third finished object is the Woodwardia by Lydia Gluck. This is a pattern from the Ready Set Raglan book, which is uh, printed by Pom Pom Magazine. And mine's all done. I knit this out of Knit Pick Simply Wool Worsted Twist in four colors, Winkle and Wanda, Wilbur and Wanda, Wordsworth and Wanda, and Wallace and Wanda. And I have knit this for my cousin. And I sort of did a gradient from the darkest to from the lightest to the darkest uh, mild yarn. I did a little bit of alternating skeins in between the colors, and I must say I'm very, very happy with it. I think it looks so fun and so cool. It's like an interesting neutral sweater. Uh, my cousin's a smaller size, so I don't know if I can model it for you. I'm not even sure if it will fit her, but if it does fit her, I'll get either her or I'll get uh, one of my friends who fits it to model it and I'll um, update pictures of that on my Instagram and my Ravelry. I really really like the yarn as always I think the pa uh, not as always I've only knit two of the patterns out of that book but the short rows could have been explained more clearly as well as I think the first let me see the first three raglans like in this side I don't know if you guys can see but that center stitch doesn't sit right and it's not displaced that's where it is but in three of the four raglans it's a pearl front back increase and this is the only raglan where it sits right and that's a knit front back release and I actually tried to look at the pictures of it and all of the photography is done off this shoulder where it sits right if they've got short rows in and if they don't have short rows in then the raglan is shown from all different angles I really zoomed into all of the pictures so I think it's actually a pattern issue I don't think it's me the raglan is not displaced I've not done it in the wrong spot it's just 
I don't know, not as finessed as I would like it to be. That's my review. Um, that book, I would actually, I would actually not recommend it. It's not as user friendly. And I, the first time I used it, I was a new Anita, and now I feel like I have a little bit more experience and I still find it a little bit hard to navigate. That's just my opinion. Anyways, I'm super happy with the yarn and the final product and I hope my cousin will like it. This is the Woodwardia by Lady Young Cluck. And then my next finished object is the Moonset Tea by Haley Smedley, also known as Ozetta. This is knit in the Colorways Collective and Maker Moran yarn in the Colorway Poseidon. It's a four-ply BFL um, sock so Superwash BFL and Nylon base and I'll post a picture of me in it. I was planning to wear this today but it's actually like a over 30 degrees day today. It's a bit hot so I don't want to wear wool. Um, let me see. This colorway actually, uh, Samantha from Maker Moran um, shared my post that I posted on Instagram and said that she'll be bringing it back in autumn which is Australian autumn so April is April Australian autumn yeah May um yeah March April so keep an eye out if you like this colorway I think it's a beautiful colorway um I had to do a couple of alterations for this I due to yarn constraints knit a smaller size than I would have chosen um, if I had enough yarn because the pattern does recommend a higher positive ease However, I knit a smaller size so the drop shoulder instead of falling lower down on my arm falls quite high up. So I just had to increase the length of the armhole and I increased the armhole in the back. Just knit straight down for longer and I had to change how many stitches I picked up. I just picked up two out of three stitches to, I don't even think the armholes that the arms are like the same amount of stitches. I'm pretty sure they're like two or three stitches off. Doesn't matter. I really, really like this pattern. I actually quite like this yarn as well, but I think the standout for me here is this pattern. It was fun to knit, and it's a really, really great um, classic t-shirt pattern. I really enjoyed the construction. This was my first Ozetta pattern, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what else she comes out with and I will definitely keep on consideration for some future projects because this was really nice. This is a pattern that I can see myself making more of um, in a more summer yarn. So this is the Moonset Tea by Ozetta. Now on to my works in progress. Um, my first work in progress is something that's almost almost done. This is the gum nut tea by Jane Bali, Bali from Mindful Making. And Jane is an uh, Aussie Danish podcaster and she lives quite close to me and is part of my knitting group. And this is her pattern, the gum nut tea, which is a four ply um, summerish top pattern with some really fun, interesting use of some accent yarns. This is great for using up a few of your scraps. My main colorway is the Three Cat Yarns uh, Merino Linen. So it's 90% Superwash Merino, 10% Linen in the colorway Vintage Tea Set. And then my accent colors, the white one is Holst Super Soft in the colorway Almond. And then here I'm holding one strand of the white, one strand of the red. And the red here is the Holst Super Soft also in the colorway Bokhara. I'm very, very close to finishing it. I am on, I've done the little bit of the accent colorway on the end, and I have a couple of rolls of stock in it left, and then I'm on to the ribbing. This pattern has, um, so I, I, <laughs> I didn't get a swatch for it, and it was looking really, really big. And I don't, turns out I was right on gauge. <laughs> But there's a bit of positive ease in the size that I've chosen. It's designed to have a bit of positive ease and I usually tend to knit more tighter fitting stuff. So I just, I think I'm just not used to seeing so much um, 
positive V's on me, especially in a t-shirt. But I think that this would be really fun in sort of a more boxy shape. So I've ended up making it slightly shorter to sort of give it a slightly cropped but boxy fit rather than I think if I make it too long, it will look just big. Like I've chosen the wrong size, which I haven't. So I'm excited to see it all blocked up. Blocked? <laughs> the whole Super Soft has spinning yarn, spinning oil in it. So it, I think it'll really soften and bloom and make these parts like really like a feature. I'm very happy with the pattern was fun, really easy to knit. I like this um, yarn from Mel. I didn't even um, alternate skeins, even though it's a hand dyed yarn. I didn't gauge, I didn't alternate skein. I think I started this project right when I was in a mood. <laughs> but it's really beautiful and really even. Mel's done a great job. So that's my first whip, which is almost done, the Gamna Tea. And then my second whip is the Seaborn Tea by Hannah Lubbin. Um, I am knitting this as a gift for my friend who's having her bridal shower soon in a couple of weeks. And if you guys have been watching my previous um, podcast, I had knit a wedding gift for one of my friends and I had decided that I would knit like off my friends that I get my, my close girlfriends who are getting married something um, as a gift and I don't think she watches the podcast but if she does Daphne look away <laughs> this is how it's looking oh gosh isn't it just the most stunning pattern I love this little lace um, on the bottom of the pattern and it's designed to have this sort of striped look and it's so on trend stripes are so on trend right now I have a couple of thoughts and feedback about this uh, pattern so this pattern is designed to sorry I'm um, hang on <laughs> I'm currently on the sleeve and the sleeve has a smaller version of the same lace and I'm knitting this in Drops Bell, which is an 8 ply cotton, linen, and viscose blend in this white colorway. And then the pink color, I'm pretty sure, is called Mauve. Uh, this yarn is super, super cheap and it's quite splitty. But I have another shirt that I've made in it and I quite like the feel of it when I'm wearing it. So I have enough of this to make an identical seaborn tea for me as well with green stripes so I'll be making another one in the future right so my thoughts and feedback on the pattern and this is not a positive or a negative um, I love Hannah and clearly like I love the look of this pattern that I've decided to still knit it despite the fact that it is a very very wordy pattern so the pattern comes with lots of different bus circumferences but also lots of different arm circumferences so that you can really customize the fit and I think that's great. Um, it's just like a 20 or 21 page pattern and I do not like reading so much information in a pattern. I, but I know for sure that's a preference thing. Some people love lots of information, I just don't. I tend to sort of, I actually didn't cast on this pattern for a while when I printed it because of how much how many pages it was. I think it's like 20 or 21 it's just not my preference um, I also found the instructions to pick up the yarn really um, confusing for this little garter collar oops my end is sticking out here so it has like pick up these many stitches in the front these many stitches where it's at a right angle these many stitches but it's really as you can see the tiniest amount so I just I just randomly picked up I don't I don't even know I just picked up stitches because it's quite a wide neck it still fits I found that part actually very confusing <laughs> um, same with this sleeve by looking at the pattern I I didn't realize that the construction was slightly more different than I thought it was because it just looks like a straightforward stockinette with um, lace 
Uh, there's a really cool technique of doing jogless stripes. So you can see, I think that's where I changed the stripes. And you also sort of do a technique of helical knitting. And you can see it's quite seamless. Like you can't really, you don't get a jog. Um, in the pattern, the way it's written, the part where you do the jog, like where you alter the, where you change the yarns for the stripes happens to be in the front, but I have seen a couple of other rivalry projects alter it to make it the back. So I've made it the back and I think that was a great idea, whoever came up with it. Right, so the sleeve is also knit separately and then you sort of knit it on here. I'm a little bit nervous about that as I don't know like I don't I, I'm not confident in my ability to make it nice and even with the tension so I'll have to really pay attention and do that part properly most of the patterns I do I tend to take the cast on and cast offs as a suggestion however in this pattern it tells you to cast on with the tubular cast on and I think it's really really worth doing it as it really adds to the shell look of it the tubular cast on i can't see what you guys can see yeah so this is one pattern that i would really like i did the tubular cast on i went through the rivalry pictures and looked at really up close of people who had done the tubular cast on versus people who hadn't and i think the tubular cast on really adds to the shell effect at the end of the day i'm quite happy with the finished project um, not the finished project with the finish like the product I'm getting so far. It's just such a beautiful pattern. It looks amazing. Um, I think after I knit mine, I think I'll wait a little bit before I knit mine. I don't think I could do two of these in a row, um, especially with the with the sleeve attaching technique. I'm a little bit nervous about that. I would still highly recommend this pattern. It's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. Hannah just has an eye on knitting the summer garments. She's also designed the fell spa tee, which I knit at the end of last year, and I really love how that fits. So I will be making one of this for myself as well. I saw on Ravelry, someone had made a single color version of this as well, and it looks so beautiful. Like I wouldn't mind making a single color version of this with the lace and then picking up the stitches from here and knitting down and just having a normal stockinette um, sleeve with the with the lace, uh, not the lace, just the ribbing at the bottom. I think the, the technique of attaching the sleeve onto this is, <laughs> I'm really nervous about it. So that's really putting me off um, even the one in the future, I'm nervous. And I'm very nervous that the fact that I'm gonna do it the first time is gonna be on a gift for my friend for her wedding. And my friend has a has a wishing well for her wedding and the other day she was saying how excited she was to get my um, knitted gift um, because it's one of the only like sentimental sh gifts she'll be getting so now I'm extra nervous. <laughs> she doesn't know what pattern I've chosen. She knows I'm making her gift. I asked her if she wanted to choose the pattern and the color or she's okay with me choosing it. You know some some people are quite picky about what they wear or they have quite strong choices and opinions and some people are pretty flexible I didn't want to spend time knitting a gift for her if she wasn't going to wear it she was happy for me to choose the pattern I chose this one my friend's vegan as well so a cotton summer shirt was a great idea hopefully the sleeve attachment goes well <laughs> I'm very nervous Seaborn Tea by Hannah Lovin <laughs> And then my next whip is at a very boring stage at the moment. This is the Underlace Top by Lily Kate France. And I'm knitting this in the BC Garn. Uh, hang on. It's the 50% wool, 50% cotton in the colorway gray. BC Garn Bio something. I'll pop the name here for some reason I've just completely mind blanked on it and I'm at a very boring stage I've knit the the front and the back and only just joined it in the rounds the pattern has these fun little let me pull out the pattern I'm not prepared today maybe I'll just put a picture in it has this fun detail where you insert in lace at the uh, top of the shoulder as well as in the neck and so far, I think I'm going to use the leftovers from my Cumulus tea 
in this undyed um, super wash merino with rainbow colored flex base that I got from Fiber Art Shed. So far, I think I'm going to go with this one. I'm not 100% sure. I have a little bit of other scrap yarn. Um, this was my travel knitting when I was away for the last weekend, basically on a long, long drive. Um, so I haven't done much since I got home. I'm uh, excited to have the finished piece. However, the knitting process so far is not really calling to me. I'm happy to have it as a stock in a project. And then my last whip. <laughs> I was so close, I'm so close to finishing my friend's Seaborn tea. However, I applied to be part of the test knit for Lily's new cardigan pattern. Um, it's called the Calm Down Cardigan. And let me pull up the pictures for you. It is so beautiful. I am so excited. So that's what the cardigan looks like. It's a stockinette cardigan with a double knit, um, button band it also has this fun little i don't know if you can see it saddle shoulder detail with some ribbing that sits in the front a very classic but very stylish cardigan i was planning to start this after i finished my friends but then i got accepted and i got the pattern and then i got excited so i've cast it on <laughs> i'm using the Peyton's wanderer yarn which is a hundred percent australian corridale yarn i got this last year so it's part of my deep stash which is super exciting because that's a square off of my make nine and it's in this um, mustardy brown color all of the wanderer is designed to be sort of more of a mild yarn i got this when my local yarn store was closing last year and i got them all for half price um, at the time that I bought this, I, it's not an expensive yarn, but I thought, because I was comparing it to prices from Bendigo, um, this comes in 100 gram balls, and I think it's about a $16 ball, whereas from Bendigo, you know, like a $100, uh, 200 gram ball <laughs> is about $16. However, now that I've started knitting with it, the quality is beautiful. I think this is a non-super wash, 100% Corridale. I'm very happy with how the yarn is feeling. So I've just started the knit. I am this far. And it's like the front left. That's how the fabric is looking. The fabric is beautiful. I don't know about the color. I thought it would be more mustardy, which I think from further away does look quite mustardy. But closer up, it has a lot more of the yellow ochre-ish tone. And each time I see it, it kind of reminds me of baby poop, which is not what you want to think about. <laughs> However, I think it's a cardigan with something else under it or with styling. I think it'll look good. I just need to get over the, the baby poop. Like, who even thinks like that? Yay! I'm so excited to knit this. Uh, the I am a little bit nervous about the knitting part of it. I didn't finish the last test knit I did for Lily due to gauge issues. It was too big. I was a bit nervous about this one when I was applying for it. I But I was like, it's a stock in a cardigan. But actually, the button band technique has a bit of finesse to it. I, however, love Lily's patterns. Lily, I think it's probably my favorite designer and I have learned a lot through her patterns I think she has a really good way of explaining everything even the little technique to sort of pick up stitches here before you knit down in the slip stitch edge was something new and it completely made sense the video she linked and it was her own video was great and I just I find her patterns a great way to learn new things so even though I'm a little bit worried about the button band and I because it a button band is like I think what makes a cardigan I really really need a, a good cardigan I've needed two cardigans so far I'm not 100% happy with either so I'm hoping this is the one me like it's Lily if there was ever going to be the one it would be this one so I will try my best <laughs> I'm sure her instructions are great um, with any sort of things I'm not sure about when I read it 
earlier, like before I started knitting, it makes me even more confused. But I usually find by the time I've got to that point, the instructions make more sense. I'm putting faith in knitting and in Lily, <laughs> and hopefully I should be able to get through the button band part without any issues. And that's the last of my whips. I have four whips going on, and let's move along to my acquisitions. So my first acquisition, I'm super excited about. I got myself a set of the Chiagu needles. I bought the second hand off of actually a viewer. <laughs> she turned out to be a viewer. So hi, Jennifer. <laughs> and I'm super happy with them. I was originally looking for, so this is the full, full set in the longer tips, in the 10 centimeter, 13 centimeter tips. I was looking for the smaller set in the 10 centimeter tips because you can make a 40 centimeter circumference with those. And then I was like, I have 40, 40 centimeter circumference and a lot of Knit Pro needles in my set. I also have the smaller Chiagu little mini sets, the red one and the blue one, which covers from about two millimeters to about four and a half millimeters. So I was like, that's enough. I this should be okay. Also, Jennifer had a very, very reasonable price for it. So, I'm and I'm loving it. Um, I got a couple more of these little pouches from Daiso in a slightly smaller size. If you guys have been watching my Instagram, I have, I use these pouches everywhere to organize <laughs> my knitting stuff. And so I've got like the small cables in one and the large cables in the other. And it fits really well inside my Chiagu in here. And then I can close and zip it up. Rather than using those tiny little Ziploc bags that you get. Daiso is like, um, we have it in Australia, but I think it's a Japanese. It's like a hot dollar store. So they have these little zips and I use them to organize my knitting. These little zip pouches, I use them to organize my knitting um, needles and stuff. I don't have like a fancy organizer, I just use the um, pouch that the needles come in, but I find to organize the cables and stuff. If you guys want to see how I have organized them, let me know. I'm happy to do a little video. I don't know how useful it would be for you, but I find looking at people's organization gives me ideas, even if I'm not exactly going to copy what they're doing. I'm completely getting sidetracked. Super happy with these needles. Chiogu are amazing. So that's my first acquisition and then my next acquisition is um, from a new store that we have nearby so Heather has started up her store called the Knitting Nook in Dural. I'll pop in a couple of images of me in the store and also with Heather. So when I was visiting her lovely store, Heather has some Hulse Garn in stock and I saw this beautiful color. So this is Hulse Coast, which is a 55% lamb's wool, 45% cotton. I would say it's a very, I think it's lace weight, like it's a two ply, maybe a three ply. It does bloom after washing and this is the colorway cantaloupe. It's so cute. I'm planning to hold it double. I have a couple more balls. This is just two of them. And um, I'm going to make like a lightweight t-shirt. So cute. I love this color. Very summery. And then my next acquisition is a huge haul from Woolly Knit. Uh, not Woolly Knit. 
oh my gosh i wish i could get a haul from woolly knit but their shipping is so expensive because they're big heavy cones and they send it like tracked first class packaging or whatever it's called my haul is from wool warehouse <laughs> which is more in my wheelhouse budget wise so for christmas i had offered to knit my father-in-law a little christmas jumper i gave him like a little voucher that said one hand knit um sweater to be delivered by winter 2023 which is you know may june-ish for us here and it it was like i i drew like a little half knit sweater and of course he was like I'm gonna get a whole sweater right I was like yes I'm not gonna give you half a sweater what a dad joke and I said like redeemable only on Christmas Day 2022 from your nearest half Filipino half Nepalese knitter pattern and yarn to be decided by you and um, so he's decided his pattern and he's chosen the single malt sweater by Max the knitter Maxim Seer Maxim Seer that's his um, name I always heard it spoken out loud and I thought it was Max as his first name and then Simseer as his last name and when I was trying to look up the sweater I was like where is it and it turns out his first name is Maxim and last name is Seer so Maxim Seer <laughs> and the yarn that um, and the color that he's chosen is from Drops Nepal and this is in the colorway Ocean, Deep Ocean this beautiful bluey green color it has quite a lot of green in it which i don't think is very visible on camera i love this yarn i'm excited to knit it this will be my next cast on after i'm done with oh my god that's the biggest wasp trying to get into my house mm -mm. um after i'm done with one of the whips i think this will be my next cast on um it's a pretty big Brig yarn it's iron weight which is like a, a heavy 10 ply i think is what we would call it um in the australian system it's a little bit 10 ply can be worsted or 10 ply can be iron i think iron is like a heavy 10 ply and in a five millimeter needle so that shouldn't be too too slow of a knit i got myself some drops lima in the exact same colorway to use as a main color with some white drops lima i have in stash to make a color work sweater um i have a pattern in mind but i have nothing decided yet but i was telling my father-in-law we're gonna match he didn't seem too keen on the idea <laughs> and then my next acquisition from them from wool warehouse is drops flora which is a four ply i think this is a similar so I think Drops Nepal, Lima, and Flora are the same yarn in different weights. Nepal is Aran, 10 ply, Lima is 8 ply DK, and Flora is 4 ply fingering weight. And it is wool and alpaca. 65% wool, 35% alpaca. And this is in the colorway Pistachio. This color is so beautiful. I have plans to make the Irene sweater by Amanda Brady and she's an Australian designer as well. It's just a beautiful sweater and I think it'll look great in this in this yarn. So this is a future four ply knit coming up. And then my last acquisition is one I'm very excited about. Bendigo Woolen Mills. Um, if you guys have been watching for a while, I think it's the first episode I ever posted actually, had used to have this line of um, yarn called The Rustic and it was a non-super wash, 100% wool, one of my favorite yarns. I have a couple of sweater quantities um, because I panic bought it when they announced that they were discontinuing it. Recently, they've bought a few colors back as a limited edition run. So I got myself a sweater quantity in this cream color. The colorway is called Aran, but this is in the 8-ply um, weight. The, it's a DK weight yarn. And I'm planning to re-knit the Purpurea by Teti Lutzak, which is the sweater that I knit in Muted in last year, and I find it way too scratchy, so I think I'm going to re-knit it and make a white cabled sweater that I'm comfortable wearing next to skin. I'm very excited. I don't know what, um, I don't know practically if having a high, high necked white cable sweater is one that I can keep clean. 
uh, but I'm gonna knit it so we shall see very excited since um, when I bought this yarn they had only got two colors back but they've got five colors back now and I'm trying really hard not to just keep buying them because they brought it back in a limited way so yay more rustic in my collection <laughs> And I have a question of the day, which I wrote down somewhere here, and then now I can't remember. Right. So the question of the day <laughs> is kiss, marry, kill. Uh, the options are lace, color work, or cables. <laughs> this question is from my arch nemesis and um, iconic idol, Francesca, from an Italian knitter and the, it made me laugh when she sent that question through so lace color work or cables i have actually tried all three so i think i would kiss cables i love knitting cables cables are my favorite i love knitting them <laughs> kiss cables i would marry color work i feel i love the look of color work the knitting process I don't enjoy as much as cables but I love wearing color work and I think it's such a statement knit so I feel like I would marry it because I'm more slower and stable with color work whereas cables and me have a very fiery hot passionate um, kissing affair <laughs> and just because of the just because I have no other options, I would kill lace. I do love lace. I just find that I can't knit it for as long because I find the fact that each row is different, you need to pay attention basically. You need to pay attention in color work and cables as well, but lace, I feel like I, I find it more tiring. So I would kill lace. Kiss cables, marry color work, and kill lace. Thank you for your question, Francesca. <laughs> and thank you everyone for watching i'll try and come back in a few weeks time with some more updates on my knitting let me know what you guys are knitting on any fun purchases you've made um, if you have any summer knits lined up if you're in the northern hemisphere and if you started on your winter or autumn knitting yet if you're um, in the southern hemisphere with me and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye